Okay, good morning everybody. It's uh, September, September, uh, February 19th, 23. This will be number four, video number four on these, uh, on this EG4 server rack battery bus bar workaround that I'm uh, working on. These are where the factory installed, or I should say attempted to install, I'm trying to reach stuff without looking at these rib nuts, which were never seated properly. And these bolts are ridiculously short, and the threads start almost a quarter inch deep, so absolutely useless. These were in here, and when you go to take them off, if you saw video number three or four, I forget already, they just fall out. I'm upgrading this to 3 8 bolts. I'm not going to use this hole. I'm going to drill and tap new holes and lock the bolts in. I'll show you how to do that. And you can freeze this if you'd like. That's the material list. Stainless steel flat washers, 3 8 Stainless steel flat washers, 5 16 Stainless steel, 3 8 by 16 by an inch. Those are the bolts. And the total was $21.34. Then if you come back over here to where they put the rib nuts in on the actual bus bar, I don't know if you can see that, they countersunk that. So it's approximately about a sixteenth of an inch below the surface of the bus bar. Now what I have done to fix that, and I measured everything out with my calipers here, I'm using a stainless steel lock washer, it has a 3 16 hole and it's .500 on the exterior or a half inch. And it sits perfectly inside the beveled indent where the rib nut is installed and what that does hopefully I can catch this with the camera angle it gives it probably maybe 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch above the surface of the bus bar so when you put your battery lug on here it's going to give you a little crush area and your battery lug, I'm using 4 rock cables in big lugs, they're going to crush down onto the bus bar, crush down into this lock washer, creating a much better contact area for the DC voltage to transfer it through because the last thing you want to have here is an arc. Arcs will start off small and they'll get progressively larger causing more heat and eventually bad things will happen so I do not recommend you try to attach your battery cables that come with the batteries into these. They're very small, they're going to concave and it's not going to be a good deal. So that was the cure for that. So I'm going to move this bus bar over to my workbench, drill and tap out the bar. I'll show you that and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to lock these bolts on where you're going to get a good connection. So, take me a few minutes to get set up. I'm all by myself here, but I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So stick around, more to come. Okay, I just realized I didn't actually show you the components. I also have these uh, nylock nuts, which are going to hold the cables on, so they won't back out. There's the actual contact, contents of the bags. Part numbers included. I got these at Tractor Supply because that's like the only place around here to go. Okay, I just wanted to show you that. That's what that's all about. More to come. Okay, I forgot to show you the actual battery cables that come with the EG4 batteries, which are kind of tiny. And there's your little teeny lug. And there is a good look at the recessed uh, di uh, dimple there with the rib nut. And as you can see, Hopefully I'm catching this. That little teeny lug has a space under it. And when you put that stainless steel lock washer that's meant to crush and lock, you see now it sits on top of the bus bar and it will crush into the lock washer and the bus bar and it remain flat with a good contact surface. That was the point behind doing that. All right, I forgot to show you that because I'm only a one-man show here and I get distracted with thought. So that's the reason for that. Okay, here's a uh, preliminary mock-up of the double four-rod cables going up to the magnum inverters. It's what they call for. Those are just short pieces from the 24-volt system. I'm probably going to have to bend these lugs to get clearance for the nuts. And on the positive side of things, 
I'll have to rearrange them a little differently. There's going to be the 4 rod cable hooked to these uh, blue C system, 200 amp fuses, and these are rated at 58 volts DC. Just another safety factor along with the breakers that are built into the batteries. So that'll be the positive side. And then over here, <coughs> I think I'm about to sneeze. You're going to need a 3 8 by 16 tap, which requires a 5 16 uh, drill, drill bit, which I have in a vise. Okay, so I'm going to go over the vise and uh, drill the holes. Water come. Okay, here's the drill sequence. Okay, I've already tapped one hole. You can see the bolt sticking through. I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty easy. I'm sure you probably have one of these. Put just a minimal amount of lubricant on here. Copper is very soft. Work these back and forth. Again, it's very soft. Very soft metal. It's very easy to strip these out, so go easy. It is just that easy. It's important to mock up all your work with whatever type of cabling you may be using. Make sure it works. Cut once. Measure two or three times. Cut once. And there's the 3 8 stainless bolt. There's the one I did previously. And this bolt just screws right in. And I'm going to come back here in a moment and show you how I'm going to lock this in. Where it should be able to fight itself loose because, again, copper is very soft. Welcome. Be right back. Okay, I've already tapped these. I've inserted one bolt. I'll show you what I did. Make sure after you're done tapping it, come in here with a file and flatten out. Make sure there's no burrs. Work your bolt in. This, again, is a 3 8 by 16 pitch thread. Make sure you get them in good. Make sure you get good contact flat on the back side, which I've already worked this in, so I know that's good. You can cinch it up good. It's going to take you a few times. You don't want to strip this. And this is optional, but this is what I'm going to do just on these last three, uh, last couple of threads. Oh, there goes the nut. I would recommend red Loctite, sadly today. I don't have any, so I'm going to have to use blue just to give it a little additional grip. And then this bolt, the head of the, uh, the bolt here will make good contact with the back. That's it. It's good to flush. I'm catching up. Now these logs will go up here, making good contact with the copper. And then you can use these 3 8 nylocks, which I don't know if I showed. And you can put a washer on here too if you want. But that's the basic setup. That's what I'm going to use. And when you're installing this, you're going to want, of course, use a wrench on the back and then snug this down nice and snug make sure it's clean I like to use a little bit of, uh, of waterproof marine, marine grade uh, grease which is what I use that red grease 
You can buy the fancy electrical stuff if you want, but I've been doing that for 40 years. When I lived on the sailboat, an old dude showed me that. That was a saltwater corrosion trick way back in the day. It still works. I put all my batteries together like that. So anyway, that's how the lugs are going to go. Bypass these crazy things that fell out. I showed you a little trick with the uh, lock washers for these divots in here where the battery cables are going to go. Then I'm going to wrap this with a one inch shrink wrap. One inch diameter shrink wrap. And I'm just going to put the shrink wrap over it. I'm not going to shrink it. And then when I get everything installed, the batteries are all hooked up. Everything's going to be where it's going to go. I'll cut the shrink wrap where it needs to be cut, shrink wrap the rest of the bus bar, and that'll complete the installation. So that's how you do it. Well, that's how I'm doing it. I'm just hoping this helps somebody. And again, these were the factory jobs just fell out. So if you tap it, use a bolt. You could probably use 5 16ths too, it would be okay. Just be careful you don't strip your copper and lock your bolt on the back side. Red Loctite would be preferable on the last few threads. And then you have a good contact surface here for your lug and the bus bar. So, hope that helps somebody. That's it for today's upgrade on the EG4 battery rack. That came free when you bought three or, three or more batteries. You got this, and these are apparently are the bus bars they sent to everybody. I don't know. That's what I got. So, thanks for watching. Here's another little quick uh, tip in case you might not have uh, nylock nuts. You, of course, obviously could use the appropriate size lock washer to the lug or washer and the nut and then cinch it down tight and then run another nut on top of it and lock the two nuts together, which effectively causes it, it creates a lock situation. Okay, it's just options, different ways of doing what you may have in stock to make a good connection that won't back out. That's it.